and they had to fight for their freedom and they, they had to get their independence from the, these oppressive parents and grandparents. And they were willing to go to war, you know, civil war, and, 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 and fight to create this uh, independent country, this independent land. And at the very same time, uh, on, on that right hand that they, you know, paying no attention to, they are, they got black uh, children, black men, black women, black babies, black senior citizens in shackles. They got uh, uh, collars around these uh, black people's necks. They um, have killed millions of black people. Um, they have black people in dungeons, in, uh, you know, the basement of churches. They got um, all these black people that are in, uh, being starved to death, um, being made to work from sun up to sundown. You got uh, black people that are being whipped and beaten and hung and burned and tarred and feathered and all of these things on this right hand while this left hand is over here talking about freedom and liberty and prosperity and um, the right not to be oppressed. And at the same time, this left hand is, you know, creating all of these laws for independence, yet in these laws they are putting for whites only. And so, you know, there's when you talk about the different reparations issues, um, a lot of people, uh, black people today, still carry <laughs> the last names uh, that are the same as those uh, so-called founding fathers. So, you know, you ask a, a person, um, <laughs> I always ask people, you know, think of your entertainers. We'll go through the list of the signatures on the Declaration of Independence. I want you to think of your entertainers and tell me an entertainer that has the last name of one of the people uh, on the Declaration of Independence. I ask them, you know, think of your entertainers and tell me how this entertainer, this black entertainer, has the same last name as one of the signatures on the Constitution. Um, how did they get the same last name of some of the white uh, Congress members that were um, alive 450 years ago? So, you know, the children um, are getting to understand that this reparation thing is pretty big. And, uh, you know, many of them have been taught in school about the Jewish Holocaust, um, even though they didn't get a lot of information in school about the reparations that were paid to Jews. And remember, Jews have gotten reparations from not just um, the, the uh, Nazis, which they're considered to be, um, they're considering to be the uh, person that caused them the harm, but they've gotten reparations from countries that supported the Nazis and they've gotten uh, uh, reparations from Switzerland, they've gotten reparations from France, they've gotten reparations from these different countries that either uh, profited off of the money that was taken or um, got the items that were taken and I uh, had possession of um, these items, different things. So reparation becomes a multifaceted puzzle. And when it comes to black reparation, so much has been subdued, not just from the, the children, but also from adults. So that many adults don't understand the whole uh, notion of reparation or the even the um, amount of things that reparations are due for. And we talked about the young lady who was uh, surprised when I read her the passage from 1865 from the Black Codes of Georgia where 
White actually sat down and wrote uh, this uh, document to send to the newly formed United States government saying that you have uh, freed our slaves and because you've done that, you have caused us, you know, irreparable financial harm. And therefore, we believe that we are owed mm, three million, I'm sorry, three hundred million dollars. And the white congressional United um, Congress of the United States saying, "Okay, well, since you are now willing to come into the union, we're we're willing to uh, pay you reparations for the slave labor that you have lost." And so they began paying these white farm families, um, these white farmers, subsidies from the, the U.S. government, from the taxpayers. And so as black people became voters and became taxpayers, um, they, you know, as they reached the age of, of paying taxes, part of their black taxes, their black dollars, were going over the past uh, 160 years was going to pay uh, these uh, the past 100 and almost 50 years was going to pay these white farm subsidies these white farm families their subsidies at the same time remember I told you about the left hand and the right hand while on the right hand you got uh, whites condemning black farmers for um, as being greedy, as being, you know, bringing up old wounds and all this good stuff. Um, they're condemning them for wanting uh, the, uh, what whites consider to be a handout, these subsidies. Um, black farmers were denied the subsidies for going on 50 years now and uh, have been fighting it and trying to get their uh, share of these subsidies that are allocated and funded in Congress, a mostly white Congress, every single year. And they have been denied every single year and was denied again this past year by a predominantly white Congress. But the at the same time, these whites uh, fill out a congressional budget that includes the subsidies from the decades for white farmers, for uh, and many of them know that these are subsidies from 150 years ago for the loss of slave labor, and so um, yet they have no problem uh, signing off on these subsidies for white farmers, while at the same time condemning these black farmers as just wanting handouts and. Um, the uh, dishonorable uh, notions that white folks perpetrate on blacks is ridiculous. And the fact that blacks actually accept this, um, you have black farmers that have been in a lawsuit, but you should have millions and millions of black people standing behind those farmers and saying, as taxpayers, our money is going to go to these farmers because you have made us over the years um, give our money to white farmers for uh, the degradation and the enslavement of our people. And we want that money back and we want it to go toward black uh, situations and black reparations, black uh, repairing of black farms. You know, black people have lost 98% um, of the land that they, uh, that they had after the so-called emancipation. And many, after emancipation, we, we had to explain to the children how um, they were like, well, if black people couldn't own land, then how did so many black people get farms? Which children have um, some excellent questions uh, to be so so small. But we had explained to them that we had 
um, there were three ways that black people basically got farmland, actually got uh, property. Uh, one, of course, was manumission, and um, where a slave owner had owned slaves for, you know, sometimes generations or sometimes decades. 